All right, everybody, welcome. We're here in the Reunion Resort in Orlando, Florida, in our Golf Zone Two Vision Simulator. This is the first in a six part series on wedge play. Hard to dial in your wedges like the pros. So lesson one, what do the great wedge players do? We're talking a little bit about equipment, we're talking a little bit about their technique and their mechanics, what kind of contact they create, what kind of ball flight they create. It's really important at the beginning, you know what we're trying to achieve. Without that goal, without that understanding and clear concept, we're shooting in the dark. So first of all, equipment. And what, what are we classing as wedge play? It, it, that will vary. Well, are you a junior player? Are you... Uh, you know, are you a man? Are you a lady player? Are you a, are you a pro? Uh, are you somebody just starting off? So the, really the distance is something that will change player to player. Typically we're looking inside 120 yards as the, the stronger players, the longer hitters, and that will come down depending on your level, your, your strength, where you are in your game. We're look, really looking at pitching wedge and down. Now everybody's got a different makeup of set. Some people have maybe four wedges. They can go pitching wedge, they might go 50 degree, 54 degree, 58 degree. Some people throw in a 60 degree. So for me, I have three wedges. I've got my pitching wedge. These days, the, the loft is getting stronger and stronger. These days, when I was a junior, they used to be 48, but these come down to about 45 now, even lower in, in some makeups of sets. I use a 52 and then a 58. That's my makeup of, of the way I like to have my gaps. I've done that for many years, um, but we're all different. And this will vary a little bit upon uh, your own strength. The longer hitters might want to have an extra wedge in the bag. If you're a little on the shorter side, you're starting your journey, you're a junior player, I'd recommend you know maybe even two wedges is okay at, at the beginning. The important thing is that your gaps are not too big when you're choosing your makeup of sets. So you, know, you don't wanna have a situation where you've got a pitching wedge that you hit 95 yards, and then your next wedge, you're only hitting 65 yards. So you've got a 30 yard gap with your full swing. We wanna narrow that gap. We never, we never win the wedges, we never get that down to 10s and 12s, but we really wanna be on at a maximum of about 15, maybe 20 for the junior player who's got less amount of clubs, less amount of wedges in their bag. So, of course, they need to be Callaway. That's essential if you wanna be a good wedge player. Uh, but other things that you know, we look at tech, with, with wedges is, we've talked a little bit about the lofts, we also have the bounce and the grind angle. Now, it's my opinion that a lot of people are getting too much caught up in this. Uh, sure, there is a difference between a 12 degree bounce and an eight degree bounce, but it's, it's quite minimal for most players to see and certainly feel. We really need to be talking about playing off Florida Bermuda grass to going to a hard pan British Open style course where it's, it's, it's hard, it's, the, the ground is firm below, the grass is short before it's really necessary to worry about that. And that certainly applies to the grind angle. We know it's this classification on that, but in our testing, there's so little difference between the different grind angles. For most of us, we're not gonna feel the difference. So that would be my advice. Try not get too caught up in that when you're choosing your wedges. The lofts, getting the right gaps are far more important. So now it's time to get into the technique. Let me hit a shot. I'm going to start with my 58 degree wedge. That'll be where we'll be focusing in on to understand the mechanics behind wedge play today. And I'm going to try to hit a 50 yard shot. So here we go. So that's my best go at a 50. So, uh, yeah, not, not, bad, not bad, I've I've carried that 47 yards, and when I said 50 yards, that's important to note, I was talking about the carry distance, uh, that's rule number one here. When you're trying to improve your wedge play, it's important to be able to control how far your ball carries, because every course we play on will have a different amount of roll. Sometimes the ball is coming backwards, you know, the green is a little soft, the green is sloping towards us, the wind is, uh, in front, the wind is this way in our face, the ball's coming back towards you. Other way around, links course, downwind, green this way, the ball's gonna run out 10, 15 yards, even 
with a 50 yard shot. So controlling your landing point is what we're trying to achieve. Now, there is some very common characteristics in great wedge player when we're looking at this data. We're lucky we're using, uh, we're using golf zone wave today, which allows us to get this club data. And it really, one, if you're able to access this, it's fantastic. It gives you clarity. It gives you, there's no guesswork involved in what's going on with your shot. But number two, even if you don't have access, understanding this data will give you a concept of what you're trying to achieve and the reasons behind it. So let's look at this. I've got a club speed of 51 miles an hour. I've got an attack angle. What is attack angle? Everybody knows club speed. What is an attack angle? So attack angle is how much your club is traveling downwards or either upwards at the moment of impact. Negative means it's traveling downwards. I'm minus five. Club path. Club path is the direction the club is traveling in at the moment of impact. So my club's either traveling to the right of the target, to the left of the target, or on target. Here I'm plus, plus 3.4. That means my club is traveling in to out, four degrees to the right of the target at impact. Face angle, 0.1. I'm gonna give that a zero. That means my face was pointing right at the target impact. Plus is right side of the target. Negative is left side of the target, a closed face. Dynamic loft, that's how much loft I've got at the moment of impact. So I'm starting with 48, sorry, correction, 58. And at impact, I've got 45 degrees of loft. I've actually de-lofted my club 12 or 13 degrees when I've come into impact. Spin loft, important number in how much spin we're gonna generate. So that's the difference between my attack angle, okay? minus five, and my dynamic loft. So you can see the difference between those two numbers is around about 51 degrees. That's how much spin loft I've got. We'll get into that in a moment. A general rule, the higher the spin loft, the more spin we get. The lower the spin loft, the less spin we get. There is something, there is a peak, which I'll try to explain to you as, as this video goes on, and it's important to understand. A launch angle. That's the angle the ball's launching off the club face relative to the ground. So my ball's launching at just a little over 34 degrees. Spin rate. I'm not going to spend too much time. Obviously, we want that one bounce and stop when we're hitting these wedge shots. That's what the great players do. But when we're using range balls and different types of balls, we are going to get a different spin rate number. So we shouldn't pay too much attention to that. Not unless we're out on grass and we're using the, the ball you're going to play with in a tournament with. Lastly, carry distance. It's... That's, uh, I think everybody understands what that is. It ball landed 47 yards away from where it started. Now, what do we see? When we, time and time again, what do we see in this data uh, with players, just the great wedge players, whether they're pros or lead amateurs or even just amateurs who are really good at getting the ball tight to the, tight to the hole from inside 120 yards? We see, first of all, we see a, a launch angle is perhaps lower than what you might think. So we're using 50 yards as a reference here, but it does change. If it's 70 yards or it's 30 yards, it changes. But let's use 50 as a reference. At 50 yards, we, with the great wedge players, we normally see the ball coming off the face at about a launch angle of about 30 degrees. So I'm pretty close. This will be a little affected by the ball I'm using. If I'm using a range type ball, a harder ball, it'll pop off the face, it'll go a little higher. So I want to estimate if I'd been using my Callaway uh, Chrome Soft, that ball would have probably come out at about 30 degrees. I think this is quite a good shot. We see, now how do we achieve that, right? How, does the, how do we get the ball launching at 30 degrees when I've got 58 degrees in my hand, right? So it's, 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 the answer's in all these numbers. First of all, we see an attack angle of about minus five. I, uh, I did a good job here. That's what we tend to see. You might think minus five is very steep. It's a, maybe a, a reasonable size divot. It's actually far from it. Minus five with a wedge struck correctly will have very little divot, if any, taken from the ground. That's a big misconcept many players have. They think you need to be taking divots. You need to be seeing the ground and the grass flying down the fairway with a good wedge shot. You don't. If you watch the great wedge players, not unless they're 
on it's rained a lot the night before, it's on short grass, it's muddy, of course we'll see some divot being taken, but in good ground conditions, we're gonna see just a puff of grass coming up. Too deep is a, very rarely we see great pledge players with big deep divots. Club path, now I'm plus four, a little in doubt. That again is another common trait of a great wedge player. Even let's say if somebody's a fade player, ball moves from left to right as they're playing, we still see, if they're a good wedge player, we still see the opposite when they're hitting a wedge. We see them on the, on the plus side, on the draw side. So if on a 50 yard shot, you won't see the ball curving, but if this had been a longer shot with that club path, I would pretend to be more of a draw player. We, great wedge players tend to draw their wedges a bit, believe it or not. There's reasons for that. If the path is to the right, the face is a little close to the path. So you can see my face angle is almost square, probably, probably a little too square for this. But it needs to be, if my face was also four degrees open, my ball is starting to the right and staying to the right. So the path to the right, the face is a little close to the path. That creates that ball starting on target or a little bit of draw spin, even though you can't, you can't see it. But what that does, when the face is a little close to the path, it's de-lofting the club slightly. Now, it's de-lofted the club slightly, so that might make my 58 into a 55, right? That's just an approximate number. How do we get, how do we get to dynamic loft 45 from 55? Well, my shaft is also leaning forward at the moment of impact, so my shaft is probably leaning forward about 10 degrees. It's a little closed. Shaft is leaning forward 10 degrees. Now I'm down to about 45 degrees dynamic loft. Dynamic loft is the loft of the club at the moment of impact, not at setup. That's key. We could have anything at setup. It doesn't guarantee I have my hands back. Doesn't that guarantee my hands are going to be back at the moment of impact? Having my hands forward might encourage it, but doesn't guarantee they're going to be forward at the moment of impact. Now what that creates starts to create the right spin loft number to really get the maximum amount of spin. And we do see this from 50 yards, we see players having a good amount of spin on it, so it gives a lot of control. The ball comes in, one bounce and stop. That's one of the factors of being in control of the ball and control of how far the ball's traveling once it's hit the green. So this is what we're seeing time and time, and again, time, and time again. Everything we do in your technique and building your wedge play is going to be to try to achieve some of these numbers with a 50 yard shot. As we get longer, they'll change a little bit, okay? Our dynamic loft will get a little higher, our launch angle will get a little higher. Maybe as we get shorter, other way around, your launch angle will start to get lower, you'll get a little less spin. But use the 50 yard as your reference point. That's where we wanna start, hitting a lot of 50 yard shots, trying to get that launch angle, trying to feel the correct attack angle You'll start to see the ball spinning. You'll start to see it stopping. Then we'll start, when you start going longer or shorter, just applying the same rules in your technique, we'll get th these differences will come in automatically. So this is what we're seeing with the great wedge players. First of all, they've got a makeup of clubs which suits their game, gives them the right gaps. Then they've got a technique which is creating the right contact, the right ball flight with the right amount of spin on it. So they're getting control over their ball. Okay, you know what the great wedge players are doing now. Now it's important, we're not in the business of giving quick tips, or we're in the business about building games for life. So yes, it's a slow start. Next week we're gonna be diving a bit more into the technique uh, of how to start to achieve these things, both first of all, creating good contact, then we're gonna talk about how to launch the ball at the angle we've been discussing, how to control your distance, how to practice. We're gonna be looking at all the elements of wedge play. We're gonna be building you a wedge game for life. So be patient, tune in next week. My name's Robin Symes. I'm a master instructor here, proud to be a master instructor here at the Golf Zone Ledbetter Academy in our headquarters in Reunion, Florida. Make sure to like and subscribe. See you next week.